Hello. I'm here recording again. Because I wanted to retell my experience while taking the sixth ayahuasca ceremony that I have taken <clears throat> two nights ago. It was powerful. It was life changing. And I wish to keep a record of it somewhere, somehow. Um, so that I may remember at some point, so that someone may remember or see it and feel it at some level of the the, the profundity of the experience that I felt. <sighs> this time I took ayahuasca and I <clears throat> expressed verbally my intention for that night which was uh, I intended and requested <laughs> that I see, feel, know, comprehend and integrate the purposes, intentions and mechanisms cosmic, planetary, and personal into my entire being, higher and personal. <clears throat> I sought to feel beyond. I sought to expand the, <sighs> the comprehension of my consciousness the purpose of my perspective into a wider scope than this human life that I have been, I have felt saddled with all of my life, which seems limited, at times seems, huh? senseless and I sought to see and feel and comprehend beyond because even though I have sometimes glimpsed sometimes felt inklings of there being a beyond and of the per of a beyond purpose I I desired I aspired to uh, truly know and understand the entire purpose And so two nights ago, I requested this and I drank the ayahuasca tea three times. Mm. And I lay down on my mattress. And as my mind twitted around, <clears throat> thinking how nothing was happening and thinking how ambitious my desire had been, I began to feel a pulse coming from my solar plexus lighter than this, but it was there. And it began moving my head one way and another. Most importantly, it began to, it began to, to move my legs. I could feel an energy 
mm, accumulate at the root of my pelvic floor, right in my pelvis, right around my genitalia, even though it was not focused in my genitalia, it was right around there. It was this <clears throat> energy growing and I felt my legs <clears throat> get, <laughs> they got pulled with these pulses in my body that I simply allowed. I simply felt oh, the pulses as ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, yeah, and, and it pulled, it pulled pulse by pulse my right leg first, at first, it began to pull it up over to, to the right side and then until my knee was bent and open, and my leg was open and then the same thing happened with my left leg. <laughs> I truly felt like asking myself, am I, is it me who's doing this? Is it a pulse? Ah, uh, no, no, this is a pulse. This is the pulse. This is, I, I'm just allowing. I'm just allowing. And truly, I just began to move my body somewhat. And then I, I just felt, and then I felt. And, and I could feel this pulsing energy to keep moving me. It kept moving. Slowly it moved my face. Slowly it moved my head one way and then another. Sometimes like this. And sometimes like this. And I began to feel this inner conversation, inner dialogue with an entity some entity that seemed to be guiding these impulses, some being, which people call the Grandmother Ayahuasca. <clears throat> and my questions were directed towards the, well, is, it, is this right? Is this okay? And then, yeah, my, my head would feel like yes, and it would say yes. And, my neck would uh, turn one way and then ah, uh, I could feel it in a certain way, like liberating energy that was somewhere, somewhere in my neck, little by little, one way and then the other, all the, and all the while with my legs spread open like this, like, you know, as a, as a frog would do, but laying down. And this energy, energy building up like connecting me to the ground and me with my legs spread open like a frog and then gradually and slowly I began to feel glimpse little threads bare threads of light little here and there of little thingies, um, like a, a, th a thread, like three different threads that were just in the air, different colors. I felt the colors. I did not see the colors. I just felt them. I just knew them as, ah, yeah, pink, green, pink, green, blue right here. And then over here, there was like a, a dome, a, a, a dome with color and the energy of a sky but also of an enormous dome like an enormous building way up high and, and blue but also made out of threads threads of light and and i could barely i could barely feel it and i could and i realized that it was that my mind needed to be stable in order for the image to be stable. Whenever my mind deviated and began thinking as in, oh, what, did, I, did I miss something over there? Or, oh, am I distracted by something? And, oh, or, or did I, did, you know, thoughts, doubts, like the, um, something of, of the sort of, oh, did I take too much? Or, oh, am I thinking of the right thing? Or, oh, am I focused on the right thing? Or, oh, whenever a doubt like that 
appeared in me. I felt like moved away from from what I was seeing and distracted into something else. And as I began being distracted one time and then another, like sometimes I would see the sky and I would go back into this space that seemed when I got distracted, it, it felt like I would go into this space of what are the thorns. There were thorns or like spiky curves, curves that would spike. And, it, and they felt uh, subtly uncomfortable, subtly like spiky, like out, like out. Mm. And the energy kept coming from here, from my solar plexus. Oh, oh, oh. But I kept, um, I kept my mind stable because I knew that it was the way to maintain the vision of what was happening. And at some point, my arms began also to move, to to move slightly, just like this a little bit. And I could feel my arms creating, weaving, weaving threads of light across my, across my, the space, the space in front of me. And I remember making sounds like this and this and this and this and this and this and, this and several threads of light like that connected to a main one and at some point it, that joined into a wing and then I had a butterfly and there was a butterfly and, and I imagine myself having this butterfly and like manifesting it into a metallic object and ah, it felt so creative, it felt so ah, magical, like I was truly manifesting what I desired with my mind and whenever thoughts of Whenever thoughts that, that took me away from that present moment appeared, I would come back to these thorns or to these uncomfortable points, uncomfortable states. And I realized that whenever I was being distracted from the now, from the here, I was stumbling upon a fear. I was stumbling into, upon some fear. And there were many thoughts that were distracting. Some of those thoughts were like, oh, how do I describe this? Oh, what's the correct word for this? Oh, how, what do I tell people when I, when I tell them about this? Oh, or, or what, what are other people thinking about me if I'm moving my arms? Or, oh, will I be recognized for this? Like, will people believe me? Things in the future or in the past or in the or alternative moments not simply not now and I realize it's fear that's pulling me at each of these moments because I'm not trusting that this right now is the moment I'm not trusting I'm trying to go to another place and I realized it was this fear that was appearing and at the same time this energy that was pulsing out of me it felt like it was it like it it conflicted oh my monitors off again it conflicted with these fears it would conflict it would like it, it would feel it and it would ah it would react against it my body would react against it in a way that i very clearly felt it's trying to get rid of it it's trying to like <clears throat> it's simply like shaking it off shaking off the energy from my hand just naturally, just like, ah, that's what it's doing. It's, 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 it's trying to clean itself, clean itself. And, and I kept doing that and then and, and the energy over there. And, and I noticed that at some point the energy just focused on cleaning me. It began cleaning all those fears. It began scanning my body, scanning my mind and like, moving in and finding those fears and finding those those uncomfortable spots and 
I felt that the task for me was to feel those fears and to remain there and to not be triggered by them into, into going somewhere else, but rather just feeling the fear and recognizing and realizing, ah, yeah, that's the fear of, uh-huh, I want to tell someone about it and I want them to believe me, so that means that I, this is a fear of recognition. But simply noticing that, not going there and not trying to throw it away either, not, tr not trying to avoid it, but rather just feeling the fear. And when I felt the fear fully, then my body, my, this, these pulses and my body reacted to it and my body would move like in a natural shaking way, trying to get rid of it. I just began doing this organically and naturally. And for me, it was a ride of simply focusing on what is being felt in this moment. Just focusing and my body began reacting in ways that were ever stronger, ever, ever like stronger. My arms do this. Go up like this, like this, like, like, and then go, my head would go down to the ground. That I could, I, I could, I knew I could voluntarily stop it if I wanted to. My muscles, I could activate my muscles, but I was not, that was not my task. My task was to remain focused, to feel everything, because this substance was cleaning me of my thoughts, of my fears. And I felt it was fascinating how it truly scanned my body, went around and it went into my mouth and my fingers began to ooh around my mouth in a methodical manner. And I knew that it was not my voluntary decision to do that. My finger literally moved around looking for where in the body is there some gunk still tied up in me. In some energetic manner in my body. It was scary, scary, moving, blah, blah, truly moving, moving. And at some point it really felt like it was my body, I realized my mind was, in a way, it was sort of melding in with this energy that was coming in, with the energy of the pulses. Because my mind was able to focus and keep smooth, keep smoothly concentrated on this moment, then this energy was able to, like, it was able to, like, harmonize and synchronize with it and to ride it together. And then my mind in this way, it also became this pulse. It, 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 at least it harmonized, it synchronized, it, they, 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 they fused into a single energy that was moving. And then I realized that my body was literally being taken over. It was being taken over by this energy because my mind was synchronizing with it. And it felt like, like this energy entity from within, from inside, was, <gasps> was birthing from within me. It was <gasps> like gasping for breath, drunk, like very half unconscious of what it was doing, but but realized that you know, there was a body you know, like trying to experiment in whichever direction it was it could like a baby does when it has a new body it's like trying to find all the place it was like <sighs> my mouth was and this and this and, <sighs> and my breath became <sighs> it was so natural, not thought out, just completely natural. And I was aware of everything that was happening. 
all the time, each moment, I realize, okay, it's breath. Okay, this is a really deep breath. Oh, and it's harmonizing with the music as well. Interesting. Okay, well, that's this is what's happening. Okay, and then and we exhale, and my hands would move across on one side and the other, and then the other. My breath would become. And then I got open my eyes, and the pulse, like, it sat me up. And I saw around the room, and I realized around the room, I saw, I saw everything, I saw like, and I saw the room, and it was the same room, of course, but the pers my perspective was so different, it felt like I was some other energy, not some other body, I knew it, I, it was my body, but my perspective was completely changed, it was, it was as if seeing the same place that my mind already knew, some other entity was also seeing it for the first time as well. And I could feel that newness, that freshness of like, <gasps> whoa, what, what, what's this? Why am, I, <laughs> why am I here? At the same time that my mind recognized exactly where I was. And, and words, I remember feeling thinking, ah, if there are, I, I remember this feeling, okay, this is a moment of surrender. I will just surrender to whatever is happening. And then as I began feeling, okay, it is often, it is words, it is the thought I had, that it is words often that, um, dilute meaning, dilute meaning often because the mind has many filters that make it be words be expressed only in the way that where we're where we try to get a particular response often it's particularly from other people but I realized okay if there are any words to be said they they let them come out naturally then come out with the breath let them just come out like waves as part of the expression and I knew this, and then unexpectedly, truly, it was like the, the breath that was coming out, and he began to say, Wake up! 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 At the same time, I, I, at the same time I was breathing and realizing this new, this room that I was in, recognizing it in my mind, and yet feeling this room is what is this reality? It's new. I'm, I'm, I'm waking up. What's this? I can just. I'm, it truly felt like I was a new being that had been asleep in my body for 39 years and finally being able to experience the world, reality, for the first time, for the first time waking up in my body. And it felt oh, unique. I have not felt this feeling of wonder and of new life. In as long as I can remember, it was a feeling of truly. This is this is a whole new thing. What? Where, where, where was I? Why? Why am I not? Oh, this is life. This is life. And I'm on yourself again. This is life. And like, like, like I was grasping for something that had been missing forever. And I woke, and I got up. I didn't get up. It was truly my body that, I, because I truly said, okay, this is a complete surrender. I am not, this is, I'm not doing anything. I'm just going to allow. And I could feel how my hands were moving like this, in circles and doing like this. And I honestly felt like, is this truly my, 
move my sur movement of surrender and I realized yeah this is exactly what it wants to do at some point you know, do like this and then I realized this truly yes this is the lowest energy point you know? and then you do this and then this is the lowest energy point completely checking 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 with myself that I was not faking it that I was not being <laughs> any kind of uh, that I was not di di deluding myself and that was one of the big fears each time that fear appeared the spikes came up the oh I'm deluding myself oh this is an illusion oh this is I'm just faking it up and I could feel the fear I, I could literally feel the shape of the fear and the darkness of it in me and it it, in it and the energy pulsated against it and against it and I could feel it being oh, just it was true it was true it was that that was the most that was the, the script that I that, that I could give this is true this is true whatever this is and then at some point, uh, my hand just found the ground and my body reacted and it got up and I began to move around like this and that and that. And I had, my body had perfect balance. I knew exactly what it was doing. And yet it was moving like back and forth this way and that way. And its arms were doing the balance and as well as my legs. It was <clears throat> completely in control. And I truly was in wonder of how it's my body truly moving in all of these directions. And, uh, and it moved and it danced 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 and, and I just and I had this present strong feeling this is me waking up. This is me waking up. This is me. This is the me. This is the me without the fears. This is the me that without the without the double thinking and the doubts and the not being sure and the and the the fears, all the fears that oh and maybe this and how am I going to look at this and how am I going to tell it in the future and if this experience changes me, how am I going to live the rest of my life? What am I going to how am I going to integrate the life of salaries and rent and friends and family and the political correctness and social uh, and social relationships and partnerships and language together with this oh, such fundamental experience <clears throat> and whenever I felt that I, ah, my body truly it truly was it, it shake it off truly it was like, oh, I, I feel like I felt the fear right here. And I would do this. And, ah, 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 and ah, it would just shake, shake, it, shake it one side and then another. And my leg would get up. And I, and I felt completely strong. My legs completely knowing of where they were and completely aware of everything. I know that the people are over there and I will not disturb them. I had this intention of not disturbing them. So silence. I knew that there was silence. But there was breath, and the breath was strong. <sighs> Attempting always to be like completely mindful. These people are there, and I am here, and I and I am conscious of what I'm doing, and I know that this is this feels uh, un feel improbable to 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 a materialistic rational thinker. But all the way knowing, I am just surrendering. I am just surrendering to whatever is happening. What is this? What? And it was dancing and dancing, and it felt so, at the same time, so shaking, liberating. Liberating. I was liberating myself, and I was merging, merging the inner self that I was into my body. It felt like this energy that was coming in from either solar plexus or from above, I don't know from where it was like merging into my body and the dance was its way of <sighs> of merging the energies, of merging, of like trying out this new shoe, this glove.
this is what I was feeling like I, this, my body was the glove and there was this energy this my soul I felt was trying to integrate into it to take possession of it despite all the spikes and thoughts and fears and doubts and distractions of my mind it was like my soul was trying to mm, let itself in and I could feel that this knowledge that it's just relax just relax just relax and I was exactly relaxing it was that was my way of relaxing at the same time the energy moved me around completely my body was so potent and so controlled it was fantastic so fantastic And as I moved around, and I, I don't remember exactly what was the transition point or what was the, the, the point of, of, of knowing. But at some point I just knew, oh yes. At some point I just felt connected to the energy of the divine. It's connected. And it was, it was in a way an energy that I embodied that I felt. It was, there was no words for it. I could describe it and sometimes I could, I could call it anything. I, I, these days, I, these days, these two things. I, the best word I can come up with is glory. There was this glory in, in this energy that I felt. In my body, it was true my body that was, I just knew that it was reaching for divine. And it did this. Mm. And it was at the exact same time that the music in the background was chanting amazingly majestic oh. and I remain in this position I don't know how long and at some point I, I, could, I was trying to process to integrate into my mind what was going on what was this what, what did this mean what is this and then I realized ah if my soul is truly integrating into myself through my fears, and I could feel my fears, I knew my fears, I, could, I knew all the fears that were around me in this room, all the limitations that I had set in my mind, because the ceremony master was there, and, I, and there was a fear in that direction, because there was a fear of disturbing the ceremony that was there, there was a fear of disturbing all of these people. And it was my fear of not being able to return to the real world later on, to integrate it correctly into the real world. And it, and because I felt them, I felt this corralling. I felt the fears as corrals, as rails, fences around me that were like electrical fences from which whenever I touched them, I would ah, come back was not able to go past them because, because they were fears, they pushed me back. But when I saw them, when I felt them, when I saw all of the fears together, and I, and I felt their shapes, I felt the shapes in which they didn't, the, the directions in which they did not allow me to go, when I felt them, and when I truly understood them for what they were, I could feel them merge, meld into the fears that other people in the room had. I could feel that, oh yeah, okay, like this fear that I have that I would disturb others, it is, it is, a, it is about the others. It is only mine because I adopted it. And it, it is only a fear because 
I do not truly include it in my consciousness, in along in my mental in my mental framework of everything. It is only a fear because I do not understand it. But once I but once I understood it, once I felt the fears, and I felt, oh yes, okay, there's a fear of that. But if there's a fear of the ceremony, but if I know exactly what can be disturbed and why it should not be disturbed and how it can be disturbed exactly, then I know exactly where the boundaries are. And then it is no longer fear. It is a clear boundary that I can know exactly when I am crossing it and when I am not. And when there is this clarity, there is no fear because I know. I know exactly where the boundaries are. And if I know, then there is no fear. There is no fear. But it requires a clear mind, a focused mind, so that it is so that I don't just wavily move around and not sure if I am actually going to touch the fear that is over here and go over here unwittingly. But rather if I know exactly where I am. If I know exactly what the effects of my actions and the intentions of my actions are, then I know. that I am free to do as I wish. And slowly, gradually, gradually, as the fears came along, one by one, one by one, and I felt them in the fears, and my body would shake, and my energy would shake, shake, and shake them out, and one by one they began to come out, come out, come out. And then later on, that's when the light feeling, the divine, just, ah. Oh. On, words, just reverence, reverence for glory that we are, complete understanding, complete understanding that we are divine and we are free in this life to do everything, anything, anything we want. And that the only reason for the suffering that we have is all these fears and all these limitations that we place upon ourselves. We place upon ourselves. That no one else places upon us. If Perhaps others suggest or demand limitations and then we adopt them. But we need to adopt none of them. We are free, free, absolutely free. And, and it is only the, the adoption of these fears and limitations that keep us suffering. That keep us thinking that we are limited, that we are we cannot. We are afraid that we are little and unsure of everything and doubt everything. And we think we need to do things and need to do this and we need to do that, but we need to do nothing. 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 It's just we believe that we are our bodies and when we believe that we are our bodies, then all the demands that our bodies make upon us, we believe them and we adopt them as our limitations. But they are not ours. If our body says, oh, I am hungry, then that is its need. It is not our need. If the body says, I'm cold, it's the body saying, I'm cold. It's a signal to say, I'm cold, I want warmth. That does not mean we need warmth. We are deeper. We are. Subtler. We are pure. We are divine. 
and we have bodies potent useful <sighs> material bodies that require upkeep and it is part of part of our game part of our task to maintain them while we are here while we are fulfilling our task and what is our task <sighs> to clean to clean our bodies of these limitations of these fears to train ourselves to train our bodies our physical body our emotional body and our mental body to give the physical body the abilities and strengths and powers to move in the world and to make changes as it requires it to communicate to express in the world to perceive correctly in the world the ability of the emotional bodies to perceive and to detect and to communicate with each other and yet to not collapse in the face of other emotional signals, strong emotional signals, to grow powerful, to grow self-reliant. The emotional body can be, can often be very neglected and not very, not well maintained because it's not well understood. But it is truly simply just another body that has signals, that gives us signals because it requires some upkeep. And then we choose which signals to heed and which to not, or what to do with the signals. Truly. It is not simply about oh, doing what the signal says or not, it's simply integrating the signal into the mind understanding it, comprehending it within the whole mental context that we have, the whole context of, of our framework, understanding it, and simply using it as part of the entire set of signals with which we choose at each moment. Yes. And our mind, the task of our mind is to become firm, focused, flexible, pliable, aware, conscious, knowing, focused, knowledgeable of distractions, knowledgeable of its own illusions and yet clear, focused, clear. Once it is clear, it can realize that it need no longer truly process so much. It can, bear, it can, it can merely perceive and allow the energies from the Divine Self to flow through it with the understanding of how energy should be translated into the world. And glory. When I felt the energy, the glory that was in the Divine, I felt truly the the sacredness of it all that holiness <clears throat> that 
sacred scriptures and holy men and prophets and avatars talk about the glory and I realized that in this glory there's only surrender there is only surrender to be had there is no desire at all to keep up these temporary lives there is only glory and these lives fulfill a purpose but the glory is there I and mean, it is there always I could feel the energy of the body my body just knowing that and it surrendered completely to the ground and it bowed into the ground head down, knees down in complete reverence to the to the to the glory of God of Truth. And then I, at some point, I saw others that were in the room in the ceremony. And I saw them and I noticed that they were also, they were also moving. They also had the process going on. And I, and one of them was crying and I saw her and it hit me, it struck me like so deeply, so powerfully, so clearly that <sighs> she's suffering and the only reason she's suffering is because she doesn't know She doesn't know this glory. She's 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 limited and by these fears still ping pong ping ping balling all around these electrical fences that we build for ourselves, trapped in our own minds. Trapped in her own mind. <sighs> they don't know. And my and that's what and my body began to exhale that they don't know. They don't know, they don't know, and at the same time, this feeling of immense compassion filling from me, not in, and not in a spirit of, oh, I, I know when they don't, of comparison or for vanity or for pride or of superiority, nothing of the sort, but rather just like, oh, they don't know, they don't know, they don't know. Glory, they don't know this 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 truth. They don't know they don't know that all of these suffering is made up by ourselves. They don't know the 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 the, the the wonder that we are. They don't know they could they how would they know they would have no sadness, no suffering, none at all, none, none. It was, it is completely dissolved by the glory. There is no suffering in this glory. If they're suffering, they, they don't know the glory. And I was feeling the compassion. They don't know, they don't know, they don't know, they don't know, they don't know. And I realized that the only, absolutely the only method, the only sensible way to help one another is to have compassion for one another.
because I did not explain it completely before, but in order to get to this state, I on the ground writhing and moving my hands all around and I could feel that my mind was desperately trying to hold on to something of itself, of its own identity, because its identity was melting. It was just not, it was melting. And my body was like trying to, it, it felt like it was trying to survive, to like, no, don't let me die. I still, that my mind, my mind was trying to survive, thinking, no, I'm still, I'm still here. How do I, how do I do this? How do I that? How do I help? How do I, how do I tell this over? How, how do I, how, how do I live? How do I, uh, like trying to build some kind of framework, a grasp at the last threads of reality that it had. And the energy was just like, cleaning, 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 cleaning. But it was, but my mind was suffering. It was like writhing, like asking, agony for help, thinking, oh, I'm gonna die, please don't. It's like grasping, gasping for anything that would help it survive. And the only reason I, that it, that it could not, that it did not reach for anything, was because I did not allow it. I knew that I did not wish for my mind to survive. I didn't, I did not. Because I, because I know it's games, I have felt them, I have gone around them many, many times, and I know that they lead to nothing. Nothing. So I, I let it die. So I felt. And it was then that I felt the glory. Afterwards. There was also this other moment before getting up where where my mind was still making up these questions and thinking, oh, is this an illusion? Is this a doubt? Am I actually doing this truly? Is, uh, is this real? What's my mind playing with? And I could feel that as I had these doubts, something in my solar plexus would like, was feeling like, ugh, 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 like disgusting. Like, like it began to feel nausea and began to feel, oh, maybe I am going to vomit. Maybe I'm going to vomit. And I began to like, ugh, ugh. And, oh, this was amazing. My body reacted and it knew, it knew in a way, okay, I'm going to vomit. And I, my hand went like this. Oh. And the bucket was over there. And it was all, oh. and it like got up. And it like grabbed. And I could feel, and my, and my whole thorax went to a clock. And it came so close to the bucket. It was perfectly aligned to vomit. It was ready, perfectly ready. And it was not my voluntary doing. It was just like it was ready. Like it felt like, okay, if you will vomit, then yes, this, is, this is it. Whatever energy is moving me, the energy of ayahuasca, the energy of my soul, the energy of my, uh, what the new being that was being born, it just knew. Yes, yes, you're, you may, okay, you can vomit, then you vomit. And then this is another time when I felt the clarity of that fear. That, oh, if it, this fear, ah, I recognize it. It's fear of, fear of being illusion, fear of, fear of being lied to, of delusion, fear of, of wrongness. And when I realized what it was, then I didn't, I no longer needed to run away from it. I no longer needed to try to justify it or to excuse it or to try to give it to, 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 
to treat it as a as an enemy. I didn't need to treat it as an enemy. I didn't need to yield to it in order to react towards it or to ignore it. I understood it. I understood mine and said, well, yes, you don't want it to be an illusion because your role is to seek out the truth. And I understood it, and I understood how the role of the mind is to seek out truth, then I would then I I felt I felt compassion for the mind. I felt uh, I understood it completely. And when I felt that, when I felt that understanding of Oh, I know why you're there. Oh, I know exactly why. Oh, I see. The feeling of the nausea. Oh, it began to be surrounded by a pink, sizzling energy of love. Pink, sizzling energy of understanding and compassion, of like healing. Of, oh. Ah, uh, uh. yes, you need no, you, you didn't need to go away. Like I was thinking in my mind, oh, it's this dark energy that I need to, to throw away, that it doesn't belong to me. But then I realized, it's my own fear. It's mine. It's my own. And even if I throw out whatever, no, it, I didn't even mentalize it. But, but, but it was mine. And then when I realized, oh, it's mine. There was love that came through. There was love that came through. And it healed. It truly felt like it healed and it came down like pink sparkles into my solar plexus. And within, I, I saw inside, I saw, I saw, I felt, and what I felt was this core, like a, a stalk that began to show lines, lines of light coming out of it, and some kind of petals around it. And it began to slowly, gradually, make the shape of this amazing flower like a like a like a flower with maybe three four large petals perhaps perhaps pink petals in these threads of light colors are not <laughs> are not clear and determined for my insight but they are it was sparkly it was a flower and it had a few little uh, pollen stalks coming out of the middle beautiful beautiful flower and it felt love and it felt like love ah and the feeling of nausea simply dissolved And then that was before I was, I was, I got up. And then I got up. And then I truly, like, I saw everything and I woke up. I truly felt, I am awake. I am awake. I am finally awake. And looked at the world and realized I have been asleep all this time. I have, I was not awake. I am awake now. I am free. I can understand the entire framework of fears. I know them. I understand that they are these corrals that we place ourselves within. And we don't need to. If we understand them, we can go wherever we want. Wherever we want. If we understand them as signals, and if we know our mind to be clear and to know when the signals come, we don't need to react to them. Our emotions don't need to oh, oh, react as they often do. 
we can do whatever we want as long as we have clear understanding of what we do clear compassion they don't know they don't know and I was struck with what felt like unlimited compassion for everyone around me they don't know they don't know they don't know that they suffer only because of themselves they don't know the glory that they truly are and in that light all of their actions all of their anger all of their envy all of their all of their harms all of their apparent nonsensicalities, apparent arrogances, misbehaviors, all of their violences. They inspire nothing but compassion in a true way. Not in a theoretical way, as in, oh, well, if he's acting badly, then um, you can only feel compassion for him. You can only feel, not, not in a platitudinous way, in a true way of, oh, they don't know, <laughs> they don't know. Oh. And I had this urge to go and help And yet knowing that one cannot force help, <laughs> one cannot force help upon anyone. Because compassion only listens, it only allows flow to move. And then in the place of wherever the fear was, wherever that anger was, wherever that hate was, wherever that ignorance was, then simply Ah, allow the love to come through and to come back in to, to, to pervade it back. There is no other way. Compassion. Either by self or by another. I knew that I was Christ, or at least that I felt the same feeling spoken about, spoken by Jesus, as said in the Bible. They don't know what they're doing. They don't know. They don't know. They don't know. They don't know. Interspears with these words sometimes. My breath would come out also and would express the word. So. Because I knew that I am, am. And from that feeling, all blooms, all blooms. what I felt, I felt, I felt truly like a new person, no longer a person, I felt free, I felt truly 
like I understand. Those are the words that came up for me. I understand. I understand. I understand. I understand. I understand. And my hands reached out for the wall. And it touched it and I realized, I understand. I understand. And the feeling was that of knowing that this body that I had does have a purpose. This life that I inhabit does have a purpose, this life that I lead. And the purpose is not even clear even now as I say it, as clear as it was then. Then it was so clear, but there were no words. There were. There were no words to truly embody the feeling of <laughs> simply like, I understand. I understand this role, this sacred role that we are here to fulfill. To lift. Ourselves and others into the glory, into the glory. <sighs> sacred. I'm sacred. I'm sacred. And let us remember, remember, remember is another word that came up, remember, 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 remember. Compassion, compassion, compassion. They don't know, they don't know, they don't know. They don't know. It can be cultivated in us. Each time that we wake up, we see. Let us see everything and let us perceive and observe everything around us the objects and the emotions and the thoughts and the signals that are coming all throughout and let us incorporate all of them into one cohesive framework a cohesive mental framework of understanding of everything of why things are the way they are of how they relate to us what are their roles and for those things that don't longer have roles the knowledge that they no longer have roles. Love, 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 love. It is love that we are here to provide. It is love that we are here to share. Love, 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 love. And love, and love is in a sense, as I have read it, it's truly, it is a pure reason, but it is completely unimpeded reason, reason unimpeded by the limitations that fear provides, the limitations that our mind adopts and we think are musts and shoulds and shouldn't. And, uh, expectations, needs, think we be, things we believe are necessary. But without any of these, reason simply is love. In a way that I simply felt
felt. It's true. And it lives inside of us. Love. Love, love, love. Let us love one another. Let us love one another. Let it, most importantly, most importantly, let us love ourselves. If we do not love ourselves, we cannot truly love another. Because then we do not understand the extent of our illusions, the extent of our misunderstandings and fears and the suffering that we encounter because of our illusions. And if we do not understand our own, we cannot understand others. So let us love ourselves, truly love ourselves, each of ourselves. And for there to be true love to ourselves, we must, it, it is a requirement to understand oneself. Down to the very core. Let us strive let us strive to dig in to the deepest core of our being. To see and know and feel our true intentions. The true causes that have led us to our choices, to our current state. From that point on, we can better know who we are. What we are. And what is our role, eventually? We must know our tool correctly in order to use it properly. And this is our tool. Thank you for listening.